Hi guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to do the iron and board kit. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is you need to have two sizes of this. You want to take them out. If you want your iron and board to open and close, you won't drill it. I mean, you won't glue it, you will drill it. And in that case, you would draw a hole here and a draw a hole there and then just do like a stick pen across and then you can get it to open and close. However, this is going to be a freestanding one. So we're going to glue it. You're going to take the smaller one and put it inside the littler one. Make sure that it fits okay. And then you're going to take a little bit of your glue, which is going to be whatever you choose. I, use, I choose Loctite because I like it. And then I'm dabbing some of that off. And I'm putting the pattern side facing up and then I'm going to squeeze it together just like that so that it attaches itself make it even so that the top is even here and the top is even at the bottom so to make sure you have it level you can push them together like this while both the bottoms are touching the surface that's level below it. Okay, you want to let that set up. In the meantime, you have this shelf. So you're going to take the two little shelf boards, and there is a difference, so make sure you have them lined up. The top is skinnier and the bottom is thicker. So the bottom part is going to get glued onto there. Just put a little bit of glue on there. Make sure I got them both. Yeah. And I just like to dab them together like that. And then I'm putting the pattern side out. And then I'm going to push it down on the uh, surface. Just like that. That way I have the back touching and it's nice and even. And what this shelf is, is it ends up being a shelf for you to put your laundry detergent and stuff on. Okay, so once you have that done, then you want to go ahead and take this, turn it upside down, and you want to glue it in the middle. Now, I like to have the wide part in the back and then the skinnier part in the front. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of glue on each. I'm sure I've got it squared up. I don't think I do. Okay, once you have that done, then you want to take these two little pieces here and you're going to glue one in the front of that and then one in the back. Just like that. Now remove that once you get the one on there and add some glue. I'm going to use a combination of the wood glue and the crazy glue. Because the wood glue will act as a filler as well. Once I have that there, kind of like just move that glue around a little bit and let that set up now you want to take the second piece that you have and you want to glue it right along here and again I'm gonna throw some wood glue right up underneath of there just like that and for the excess you can just kind of pull that off if you want with like something like a piece of cardboard or something or you can leave it there because you're not really gonna see it because it's on the bottom All right so then you're gonna let that set up just like that and after you've done that and it's completely dry if you want to add cloth to the top you can 
Now, the cloth isn't included in the kit, but what I've done is I've got a piece of felt, and I'm going to add cloth to mine. So I'm going to add just a little bit of crazy glue right to the top. I've cut it sort of to fit. It doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to cover it. Then I've got a piece of white material. You can use pretty much anything for that. I'm going to flip that material over. And then I'm going to literally start right on the far edge with the material going over and holding it down so it attaches itself. And in most cases, it should attach pretty quickly depending on the glue that you're using. Now once I have that done, then I want to take my scissors and I kind of want to snip. Right along here. If you have pink and shears, that's great too. Now I'm going to go ahead and add some more glue going right around that face of the edge and the front and I'm just going to hold it in there. Pull back any excess material. That way it's not getting glued down. And then you can cut that off when you're done. You'll remove all that after the fact. Now you want to go ahead and put some glue right along this edge. And I'm using crazy glue because it attaches pretty quickly. You could probably do hot glue if you wanted to, or you could wait it out in between fabric glue and um, do it that way. Careful not to get your fingers stuck because if you're anything like me, you'll do it five times in a project. Now for this part, I'm just gonna kinda trim off this excess that I don't need. And you might wanna get a pair of scissors that your kids have not used for something other than sewing only. Because <laughs> in this house, you hide the scissors in the craft room thinking they'll leave it alone and they won't touch it, but then they find it and then they use it for everything but what it says. And so I should have probably made this just a tiny bit longer so I didn't have to work with it so tightly in that area. So I'm just going to use the glue to hold it to press it down. Basically, if you have a pair of scissors that says sewing only, that means you only want to use it for fabric. <laughs> all right, just remove all of your excess material. Okay, so once you've got it all trimmed up and everything, there you have a padded top. And then there's your iron and board. Again, if you want this iron and board to open and close, don't glue it here. Just drill above it and put a pin in there and a pin in there and then hook it together. And if you want to know how to do that, there's a sewn board. I mean, uh, um, I'm sorry, an iron and board that I already did with my dad a while back that's on my YouTube channel that you can find how to do that in. So this way I figured I would show you how to do it without doing that. Alright, so now the next thing is if you are going to be doing the um, little bottle of laundry soap, it's just a little wooden version. You can just kind of set it on your shelf. I use paint pens 
that I got off of Amazon, metallic color. Um, they're water based and they're odorless. They are really great. They do a lot of really quick artwork and it's got a lot of small spots for details. So you can go ahead and do that. And then you just paint the bottle. And if you want to sand it round and stuff like that, you can, but I'm not going to. But in, the way to do that is you have a right and a left. And then you would just take some crazy glue or wood glue, whatever you have. And you would literally just glue them together like a sandwich. And you want to have the back on one side and the front on the other side. So the printed side stays out. You want to let it sit up. Make sure you have it squared together so that you have it flat. I'm pushing down on it to make sure it's squared all the way around. Then for the lid, you want to do the same exact thing. You want to glue them together. You don't need a whole lot of glue because it's just the tiniest bit. And then just kind of make sure they're even the best that you can get it. And if you have a hard time with it, just use a pair of pliers and squeeze it. Not too hard to where you break it, but enough to where you can get that little lip together. Once you do that, then you can go ahead and paint it. I'm going to paint this one a different color since I already have the smaller one that I did. Um, I'm going to go ahead and paint this like a teal bluish color. And I'm just going right over. And they have these in metallic and not in metallic and all kinds of stuff. So I think it's like a pack of like 20 or something like that for $10 on Amazon. Now your bubbles, that's what they're supposed to be. You can just kind of do the same thing. Just kind of go in and color them. Then you want to glue your lid on. Now I will tell you before you go and do the edges of this, you need to clean those edges really good and make sure you don't have any burn marks in there from the laser cutting it. I mean, and this is cute enough to just kind of sit on the shelf and give you the thought that it is detergent. And you may like the darker color. The darker color does show the bubbles a little bit better. But since I already had a dark one, I didn't want to do it twice. All right, now for the hamper, I'll show you how to do that. This is also a kit. So when you get the kit, it's going to have these two pieces here, and then you're going to have some circles. The circles are going to be two sizes. You want the smaller size if you're adding fabric. You want to take your wooden rectangle pieces, and you want to go on the outside edge of them. just like that and then you're going to put the piece right inside there and you're going to do that for all four all right now before it dries you're going to slide the top piece over Line it up. Try not to glue it to your table. All right. So you should have it looking kind of like one of those old toys that you used to play with when I was a kid. 
So you want to have it like that, and then you want to add glue around those pieces the same way that you just did on the other one. Not on the bottoms, just around the edges of it. If you have any on the bottom, you need to get it off before you do this next part. Okay, turn it upside down and then press down. Flip it back up immediately so that you can wipe off the excess glue and then turn it over again and then press down. That should give you a little circle dome that looks like that. Now you want to take the smaller of the two that you have and then we're going to line this with fabric. So you can use the crazy glue or you can use the hot glue or fabric glue for this. Now you're going to come down about one inch into your fabric and then you are going to roll it with it. You can use your fabric of choice for this, but remember when you do it, you need to make sure you have enough to go around twice if you don't want to see that glue. Now for the seam, you will see the seam and that's okay because you see the seam in everything that you do when it comes to fabric, so that's fine. going to gently press that in and then trim up any excess. Now tuck this side in just like that and make sure it fits. Once you know it fits then you want to line the inside here with your glue of choice. Now, I'm pressing down on the table with it, just to keep it intact. Now, the other side should be long enough that you should be able to tuck that in just like that, so it looks like it's a hamper bag. Now, before you tuck it in, if you really want it to be a hamper bag, then just glue this edge shut. And that small piece that you had, that should fit right in there unless your material is too thick. And in that case, you need to use thinner material or you need to line your creases up in a different way. Make sure I grab the right one. Now you want to go ahead and, it's not exactly the easiest, but you want to slide that in there and make sure you got it to where it'll fit and everything. And if it does, then you want to go ahead and glue it in place.
and then there's the bottom of your basket, there's the inside, and then there's your clothes hamper. So the next thing is this little shelf comes with this part. You want to go ahead and take this and line it up. This is the bottom piece of the shelf. It's like a little decorative support piece. And you want to put that right even in the middle of this. So just kind of stick it just like that and make it even going all the way across. Then you want to put your support pieces in, which again, they're two different types, so the thicker part goes at the bottom. And then you have yourself a little shelf. And then that's it. So this is the laundry room with options. You have your iron and board, the washer and dryer stackable, the little clothes hamper, and then your drying rack, and then some signs that are decorative to hang on the wall, along with some little shelves. So if you like this and you want to get this kit, go ahead and check out my shop. I'll leave the link below. And also you can see lots more stuff on my Facebook page under Dollhouse Miniature Madness and Tutorials, and on my website, dollhousetutorials.com. Thanks a lot. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.